Eve Guerin, the Healthy Community Action Coordinator with the Central Shenandoah Regional Office on Youth. And um, generally speaking, this is true, why do so few children walk our bike to school? Folks around here may say, wait, more kids are doing that this year with the shortage of school bus drivers. But generally, that's not the case. Generally, no. I, I would put it to three reasons. Uh, development patterns, so in housing is being built away from schools. Uh, there are legitimate concerns about uh, inadequate pedestrian and bicycle infrastructure, so parents are justifiably concerned. And those two things together create more people driving to school to drop off their kids, which makes it unsafe for those that actually do walk and bike, and so it discourages them. Which is a shame, too, because there are certainly benefits to walking or biking rather than driving or taking the bus. Oh, absolutely, and they extend to the kids, the school, and the community. So the kids, um, they arrive alert and ready to learn. Uh, they develop independence when they're walking or biking to school. You want them to have a sense of agency. Uh, and actually, they get ac better academic performance because they are awake and alert. Um, the community uh, gets benefit of, like when people walk together, they get to know each other. And the schools have fewer discipline problems because the kids are alert and ready to learn. And um, they also have better air quality around the school because uh, there are fewer cars dropping off kids. Um, Dismissal and arrival are a lot better. And it could be fun. <laughs> oh, it is fun. It is fun. Um, let's talk about uh, specifics in the Valley and in Waynesboro. Uh, let, explain to us why HCAT is necessary. All right, so HCAT, the purpose is to prevent childhood obesity. Um, generally speaking, we have a childhood obesity problem in the country. Uh, Virginia's rate is 17.5%. Uh, it ranks, it's either the 17th worst or the 33rd best, depending on how you look at it. Um, Waynesboro's is 22%, um, and we have 34% of our kids that are overweight. So between those two, roughly two-thirds of our kids are not at healthy weights and not exhibiting healthy lifestyles. So we need to do something to address that problem. So walking and biking to school certainly could go in the right direction there. So what are some strategies for making that safer? Uh, so I have four that I'm thinking about. One is to continue the bike and pedestrian safety uh, instruction that I currently do in the elementary schools. So kids know how to bike and walk safely around the neighborhoods. Um, creating opportunities for kids to get out and walk, walk and bike more outside of the school environment so they can develop the self-confidence and the skills to do it on their own, um, like organized bike rides, that kind of thing, walking school buses. Um, the third is, um, I'm blanking for a second. Oh, policy changes. Uh, for example, in Waynesboro, we currently have a policy where any kid that lives within three miles, no, I'm sorry, that's wrong. We, any kid has the opportunity to ride a bike regardless of how far they live from school. And so is that a good thing when you're trying to encourage healthy lifestyles? And the last one is the built environment because there is a connection between built environment and public health. And so you really need to take a close look at the roads and the sidewalks. Um, and make certain it's, it's good for multimodal transport, not just for automobiles. Some good ideas, good insight. Hopefully some folks maybe take some benefit from this conversation. Appreciate you coming in. And my pleasure. I have much more to say if you want to hear it. <laughs> As we go to break, okay. or to back to Casey, you continue, okay. we'll keep talking. Okay. Casey.